Amen. Praise the Lord, fellowship. Praise the Lord, fellowship. Has the Lord been good to you on today? Has he been good to you today? Come on, let's lift up a praise in the building and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Ask that everyone will please stand to your feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you, for Lord God, for keeping us, Lord God, all throughout last night, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing us, Lord God, even when we didn't deserve your blessings, Lord God. Lord God, before we ask anything of you, Lord God, we ask that you would forgive us, Lord God, from everything that we've done that was not like you, Lord God. We stand repentant before you, Lord God. Clean us up, Lord God. Purify our hearts, Lord God. Clean our minds, Lord God. Purify our thoughts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for being God in our lives, God. We thank you, Lord God, for being our Jehovah Jireh, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your daily provision, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your divine protection, Lord God. We thank you for keeping us, Lord God, from seen and unseen dangers, God. We thank you, Lord God, for covering us, Lord God, for dispatching your angels round about us, Lord God, to cover and watch over us, Lord God. Now, God, we ask that you would anoint us afresh on tonight, Lord God. Send your Holy Ghost fire on tonight, Lord God. Lord, we call you, Lord God, to send revival fire in this place, Lord God. Engulf us, Lord God. Ignite us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Send revival fires, Lord God, to our homes, Lord God, to our children, Lord God, in our communities, Lord God. Send revival fires, Lord God, in our jobs, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Revival fires come to our homes and our families, Lord God, and our finances, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Send revival fires all across this nation, God, in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to desperately seek your face, Lord God, like never before, Lord God. Now, God, we commit this service into your hands, Lord God. Bless every musician, Lord God. Bless every minstrel, Lord God. Bless every singer, Lord God. Bless the door watchman, Lord God. Bless every usher, Lord God. Bless every minister, Lord God. Bless every deacon, Lord God. Bless every mother, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, everyone that's in this place, Lord God, send down your blessings upon us, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And we give your name all the glory and all the praise. And it is in Jesus' name that we say amen. Come on and put your hands together and give God a good Shekinah glory praise. Come on and put your hands together. Come on, let's Shabbat the Lord in this house. Let's lift him up in this house. Let's set the atmosphere for the word. In the name of Jesus, revival is coming. Revival is coming. Revival is coming. Revival is coming. In Jesus' name. Revival is here. Revival is here. Revival is here. You better catch on fire while the fires are burning because revival is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask you to turn to someone that you have not spoken to on today and greet them with the love of Christ. Greet them in the name of Jesus. God bless.
the Holy Spirit led a young man named Willie L. Reed Sr. to establish a place of worship. He settled on Building 10 in Bazell Village in Warner Robins, Georgia, and on February 10th, 1980, the first service of the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church was held. As the church continued to grow, on May 1st, 1983, Pastor Reed moved his faithful congregation into their new sanctuary, which is now known as the Genesis Center. In 1987, God gave Pastor Reed a vision to build an even bigger sanctuary as the growth of the church grew to be too small for the Genesis Center. Through faith and sacrifice, on October 4th, 1992, the church was able to move into the sanctuary, now known as the chapel, without a mortgage. The people began to make disciples and they went out witnessing and, and uh, after they started witnessing, the church started to grow. And so if the church is not growing, you know, it's dying. So we've been alive for these last 23 years and now God has uh, taken us to another level. In 2003, Pastor Reed cast vision for a new dome sanctuary and in 2008, the FBBC family broke ground. When we left for Zales Village Back in 1982 and marched into 431 Dunbar Road, we knew God had something great for us to do, is to help save the lost at any cost. On January 16th, 2011, Fellowship marched into the Faith Dome. He brought me from a long way. Yeah! He brought me from a little old village all the way over to Dunbar Road. He brought us from over 431 to 450. He brought us, y'all know him, don't you? Don't you help me praise him? In the all right, in the all right, say On May 4th, 2012, Pastor Reed received his heavenly reward and transitioned from time into eternity. This would leave fellowship without leadership for nearly three years. Where would we go? What would be next? Who would lead us? Tune in tomorrow to learn more about the ram in the bush that was to come. If you love the Lord, give him praise like you love him, everybody. Come on, you love Jesus. He got you here tonight. He woke you up today. He blessed your life. He kept you in your right mind. You drove here tonight and didn't have an accident. Come on, somebody give God praise that he's a keeper. And yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 It is revival here at the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church. And we are thankful and grateful to be here tonight to worship Jesus Christ because we are celebrating 44 years. 44 years as a church family. And look what God has done in 44 years it dawned on me church uh, that this past Sunday the Holy Spirit led us uh, to preach a sermon about the feeding of the 4,000 and our membership is currently at 4,000 <laughs> so to God be the glory we, we, we hear in the scripture, and it, it still holds true today, that Paul planted in Apollo's water, but it was God that gives the increase. Amen. And we're here tonight to continue the celebration, and we are standing on a firm foundation. I appreciate you uh, for still standing, because we're getting ready for the word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Let me say to those of you that are in the virtual sanctuary, we welcome you tonight 
uh, to this opening night of our Let's Go Revival. The Lord led us uh, earlier this year to launch our objective that by this time next year, we will liquidate our mortgage. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, you see that G in zero, that's goal zero. Goal zero, that's the goal. We want to get to zero so that we can do other things for the glory of God. Amen. 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 Well, church, I'm thankful tonight that I got family in the house tonight. I got family in the house tonight. <clears throat> this man of God that is going to come to us tonight is extended family. And uh, we've been walking together as brothers now well past 10 or 15 years. And I've seen God use him from a very early age. As a matter of fact, his first church, he was called a pastor in his hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. He was only 19 years old. That's, that's, that's early to be pastor in the church. And I've seen God matriculate him and raise up his voice to now his voice expands past his hometown of Memphis all across the United States of America. He is the very, very proud pastor now of the Second Canaan Missionary Baptist Church in my hometown of Detroit, Michigan. And interestingly enough, he was coming in town as God was shifting us out of town. And uh, I'm so thankful uh, for what the Lord has done in his walk, work, and witness for Jesus Christ there in the Second Canaan Church. Oh, but tonight, he is here as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> After our music ministry will have led us in worship, the next speaking voice that you will hear be the very proud pastor of the Second Canaan Church of Detroit in the person of my friend and brother, Pastor Frank Harris. Can we give him a great fellowship welcome? Come on, let's welcome him tonight. Come on, let's welcome him tonight. Our choir is coming, and uh, when he shall have approached uh, the pulpit, I ask that you will stand in reverence of the word of God that is getting ready to come for. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus Christ. Amen. Old song used to say, look where he's brought me from, right? So look at your neighbor and tell him I made it out. We're gonna do a little twist to this song. You know what? Sing with us, come on, clap your hands. Come on, choir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, 
me He delivered me Way back then I was a sin undone I was a wretch undone I was a wretch undone
Would you just would you just touch about three people and tell them I made it? I made it. I made it. That was the wrong person. Touch about two more people and tell them I made it. 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 Touch somebody and tell them I'd be all night telling you the stuff I made it through. So just believe me when I tell you, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, touch somebody and tell them I don't know where I would be. You still got the wrong person. Touch somebody around you and tell them I'd be all night telling you what I made it through. But just believe me when I tell you If it had not been for the Lord Turn around and tell somebody I almost lost it all Touch somebody and tell them that if it had not been for him, I would have gone crazy by now. But tell them I made it. Had a lot of heartaches and pain, but I made it. Had some people to walk off and leave me, but thank God I made it. Thank God I made it. Thank God I made it. that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice <laughs> we choose to rejoice ain't no need in you putting it on hold take about 20 seconds and get it just go ahead
To God be the glory for the things he has done and so rendered unto the children of men. What a mighty God we serve. May the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. For certainly tonight we have a right to praise him. It's our responsibility to praise him. But we also praise him because we got a reason to praise him. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah let me rush tonight to express how appreciative we are for the preaching privilege to be a part of this series of services to share with you my sentiments on the scriptures and the savior and i'm thankful for the extended invitation of your pastor my friend and my brother beloved, Pastor Tolan Morgan. Why don't you give God praise for your pastor? Um, I say it tonight as I say often that whenever you look at the gift that has been given, it says a lot about how the giver feels about the one in whom he has given the gift to. Fellowship, I don't know what you've done, but God has blessed you with a wonderful gift. Yeah. 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 And, uh, he's not just a good preacher, he's a good pastor. But outside of all of that, he's just a good person, right? I know many who are good preachers, but they are terrible at being good people, right? And, uh, and, so, and so I'm thankful for you, my brother, for your gift. I'm thankful for the friendship and the brotherhood that we share. As I say so often in private, but I say it again tonight in public, that we thank God for you. Uh, and we thank God that our paths have crossed. Um, in such a time and season as this in our lives. And then to all of those who give a support to the ministry of the pastor. And then to my sister, Lady Morgan, why don't you give God praise for my sister. Uh, who is a gift to the body and certainly a gift to your pastor. Uh, a Tolan Morgan needs a Lenine Morgan, right? <laughs> and, so, and so we're grateful for that. And uh, I don't get a chance to say this as much when I'm on the road, but my wife is hanging out with me tonight. Amen. And I'm grateful for her presence tonight. The secret is, it's really not about me. She wanted to come see her sister, right? And so... <laughs> And so, uh, however that rolled for them, they were, they were able to pull it off. And so I'm grateful to have her presence uh, so that when I'm stumbling in the next few minutes, I can at least look right here and get back on track, right? So I'm grateful for that. And thank God for each of you who make up the leadership and the laity of this, the Fellowship Church. Listen tonight to the words of Joshua chapter number 6. Joshua chapter number 6, and there in chapter 6 of Joshua, I want to start our reading at verse number 1, and I'll read a few of the following verses thereafter. It is my prayer tonight that you don't allow a certain word to get in the way, but I pray that you will allow the Lord to meet you wherever you are. 
Joshua chapter number 6, and I'll start reading at verse number 1. I'll read from the New King James Version, but if you have a mobile, it on your mobile apparatus or a hard copy of the Bible, if you got anything that says Bible on it, we're still in good company, right? Joshua chapter number 6, verse number 1, here's how my Bible reads. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. And you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed, and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was... When Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout. Then you shall shout. I want to talk tonight for the time that's been allotted for us to share in preaching with this thematic thrust, Strange victory. That's what I want to preach tonight. Strange victory. The children of Israel have crossed the Jordan faithfully following the commands of God without fail. And now they stand at a critical intersection preparing to claim the promised land. However, tonight, as is often the case in life, meaningful endeavors are always accompanied by challenges. No matter how much we try to opt out of it or wish that we could be exempt from it, there will always be some opposing forces between our here and there. That's the narrative of the Christian journey and that truth was embraced by the witnesses before us when they sang songs like, I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. It was their understanding that was announced that the journey was a battleground and there would be a constant war that Christians would be engaged in because of the militant aspect of the Christian faith. Hear me tonight, if we disregard the militant aspect of the Christian faith, if we disregard the suffering that comes along with the Christian faith, then we deny the reality of the cross. I believe tonight, church, listen to me quickly. I believe tonight that we gain a better appreciation for what we possess when we face our challenges in faith 
more than we would in their absence. Israel is on the verge of conquering, but they have to address the obstacle that is impeding the promise. The claim to fame walls of the city of Jericho are obstructing them. Interestingly enough, most of the average Israelite soldiers had never seen a massive wall surrounding a city, leading them to think that this was a moment of impossibility. However, given the promise before now, they don't have to fear. Because the same God who promised it is the same God who will also give them instructions on how to get past it. And that's God's word for you tonight. If you don't remember anything else, I want to tell you tonight that you ought to see your obstacles not as dead ends, but as an entryway for God's power to manifest in your life. L let me say that to you again tonight, that you ought to see your obstacles not as dead ends, but as an entryway for God's power to manifest in your life. Let me flip that thought on its head and give it to you another way for consideration. Dead ends always introduce us to another side of God that we never would have seen had it not been for the existing barrier in between us and what he promised. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight but maybe that's God's word for your current situation tonight that had it not been for the barrier or the chasm in between you and what God had intentionally set up for you to receive you wouldn't know God the way you know God right now but the interesting thing tonight is that dead ends always introduce us to another side of God that never would have been exposed had it not been for the barrier in front of what he promised that he would already give us Joshua and Israel are held up in their journey toward possession nevertheless God gives comfort by announcing their victory before advising them on how to stand in victory did you catch that? Let me say it to you again. Joshua and Israel are held up in the journey toward possession. Nevertheless, God comes and he gives comfort by announcing their victory before advising them on how to stand in victory. Hear me tonight, church. Whenever God leads you to advancement, God has a way of going ahead of you to lay the groundwork for for victory before you arrive. Am I talking to anybody in this room tonight who can give God praise because you've seen God go ahead of you and work out some stuff on your behalf even before you arrive because I presume as it is a natural inclination that Israel, they are nervous. They're nervous about the outcome of their understanding and God knows that. But he also knows the battle is already won. He knows that they have anxiety. He knows that they have moments where they are flustered and they are concerned about what he said to them. And since he knows that, he wants to let them know that the battle is already won. So here's what he does. He says to Joshua in verse number two, he says, see, I have given Jericho in your hand. Now, I know you have a studious pastor who walks through the Bible, and so I'm not telling you anything you've never heard. But, but, but just in case there's a moment that you need a reminder, let me say to you again, see, I have given Jericho in your hands. See, I have given Jericho 
in your hand. Now, just in case you are a casual Bible reader, I want to help you tonight to understand that this is in the past tense. It's, it's in the past tense, which means tonight it has already happened. Okay, okay, let me keep pressing tonight. Hebrew scholars refer to this term as the prophetic perfect. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a literary technique that's, that's distinguishable in the Hebrew translations of the scripture, meaning when a future event is so sure to happen, it is referred to in the past tense. Okay, missed it. Uh, when, when, when a future event is so sure to happen, it is referred to in the past tense as though it is a reality that has already happened. Okay. In other words, tonight, the battle was already over before it ever started. I wish I was preaching to somebody in this room tonight because that's God's word for you tonight that whatever it seems that seems to be pressing up against you the word tonight is the battle has already ended and you hadn't even showed up to fight yet because the Lord said it's already over. Can I suggest to you tonight only God can declare the ending from the start. I said only God, let me talk to y'all over here, only God can declare the ending from the start. Now can I keep pressing to tell you tonight that sometimes God, though he's not obligated to do it, he will give you the conclusion of a matter as a gift of reassurance. And he does that so that we don't allow doubt to dictate our response to forward movement. Did you hear me? Let me say it to you again. That he's not obligated to do it, but sometimes God will give you the conclusion of a matter as the gift of his reassurance and his love and mercy for you so that you don't have to allow your doubt to dictate your response to forward movement on this journey it's a journey of faith it's a, it's a journey of faith and because it's a journey of faith we are required to follow him in faith we're required to follow him in faith because he knows if you knew all of the things that would take place in between your ascending and your arrival, he knows you would abandon the process. If you, if you knew all of the pain, all of the heartache, all of the disappointment, all of the eerie sadness, all of the setbacks, all of the letdowns, all of the heartbreaks, if you knew all of that before you started the journey, you would have never started the journey. But God says every now and then, I got to tell you beforehand, just in case something comes up along the journey, you don't have to allow it to set you back because you already got my promise to go with. He tells Joshua the outcome. And in telling him the outcome, it is a moment that required direct obedience. Don't miss that tonight, church. He tells them the outcome, but although he tells them the outcome, it's a moment that still requires direct obedience. The truth of the matter is sometimes our personal insistence for clarity can hinder our obedience. You know, so, 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 sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we want God to show it to us in a different way. And because of our moments of personal insistence for clarity that hinders our obedience, we end up allowing confusion 
to serve as an excuse for disobedience. Did you catch that? Let me say it to you again. That, that, that sometimes our personal insistence for clarity can hinder our obedience, but we sometimes allow our confusion to serve as an excuse for disobedience. You know, when we look at the circumstances Israel had, they had every reason to be unease because of what they heard in verse number two. They had every reason to be uneased in verse number two for what he said because of what they saw in verse number one. Okay, I'm coming. In, 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 in verse number two, he says, see, I've already given Jericho into your hand. In other words, he says, it would be a waste of my divine initiative to move on your behalf and you are too blind to pause and see what I've already done. Okay. He says, see, I've given them in your hand, but because of their moments of still seeking clarity, they cannot take in totality what he said in verse number two because of what they saw in verse number one. Verse number one says that Jericho was securely shut up. None went out. None came in. Which means tonight, as a result of what they saw, their problems blocked their perspective. Okay, let me keep trying this. Uh, it, it, it looked like the city was impossible to get into. They had shut themselves in don't miss this because of fear of the people. <laughs> no one went out, none came in. Here's the good news tonight. The sign that something is tightly shut up in your life may not be the sign that you're not going to get in. It just might be the sign that the enemy knows he can't keep you out. If I had time, I'd keep pressing to touch you, to tell you to touch somebody and tell them, let them know I'm coming for everything that God said is mine. And regardless to how much they try to close themselves in, they got something on the other side that belongs to me. Okay, okay, okay. Um, th this is interesting because the scripture says that they are locked in they are locked in because of the Israelites. They have locked the city down because they heard about God's people. God, they, they, they heard about the great deeds God had done for them. They heard about the victories that God had won. They heard about how he had brought them across the Jordan River. They heard about how he had delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. And they were scared of what they could do because although they had shut themselves in, they still knew that God had power to let them in. I'm trying to tell you tonight that most of the stuff you are scared of is scared of you. Most of the stuff you are afraid to go after, it's afraid of you to come after it because it already knows if you make a pursuit, you're going to get what's yours because the Lord has already made the promise. Their perspective was blocked from what they heard in verse 2 because of what they saw in verse number 1. He says, see, I've already given it to you. See, it's already yours. Soren Kierkegaard says on one occasion that life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forward. That, that, that they literally had to believe in advance what would only make sense in reverse. 
that's what faith is. Faith is believing that a thing has already happened even when it hadn't even started the process for happening. Okay, um, faith is believing that something is so when it's not so, so it can be so because God says so. You missed it. Let me say it to you again. I said faith is believing that something is so when it's not so, so it can be so because God says so. Mm -hmm. yeah. fa 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 faith is having confidence about a matter even when it hadn't occurred yet. But wait. Wait. Louder. God never instructed them to fight. God, I'm like, he, he never instructed them to do any fighting, but he gave them a plan that appeared strange to men, but it could not fail because it was his plan. <laughs> Notice, they're looking at what he said while also looking at what's in front of them and he says I've already given it to you but even though I've already given it to you I got to give you a strategy that requires for you to follow the commands to the letters notice church the commands are in verses 3, 4 and 10 they have to prepare for battle without a militant strategy I got to wrap this up. They, they have to prepare for battle without a militant strategy. All they have is the banner of God's promise. They don't have to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they still have to participate in the pursuit. Nothing could be altered. Nothing could be added because it wasn't their plan. And might I suggest to you tonight, that many times you are the cause of the plans of God being ruined in your life because you always think there's a better way than God's way. He gives them the directives. They're clear and concise. Notice what he tells them. March around the city. Verse number three. March around the city. All you men of war, you shall go around the city once. This you shall do for six days, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark, but on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. That's interesting, church, because this strange strategy encapsulates the essence of faith because adhering to instructions requires for them to have discipline. I didn't think I would get that many amens on discipline, but I appreciate it. I'm, I'll keep pressing. It, 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 it takes discipline to have the things of God. Did you hear me tonight? It takes discipline to have the things of God. Every blessing is not an overnight delivery. Now, now, I hear you. I hear the curiosity. I'm not taking anything away from God's ability. Yes, God can do some stuff overnight. As a matter of fact, he don't have to do it overnight. He can do it instantly right now. But for the sake of building your spiritual maturity, I must tell you tonight, there's some stuff you got to wait on. And sadly tonight, Monroe, the Christians of the current day are being developed into thinking that everything God does, God does it right away. We, we, are, we are building Christians who have been influenced by society that has cultivated the idea that everything should happen fast for instant results and gratification. And as a result, when it comes to the things of God, it's a struggle for some people because they don't know what it means to have patience. Patience. 
And God's instructions are always meant. Why y'all not shouting loud now? Okay, I'll keep going. And, and, and God's instructions are always met with reservation because commitment to the process births a life of discipline and order. Can I tell you tonight, the same way you shout about blessings and favor is the same way you ought to shout about discipline and order. Because here's the reality. Discipline to wait will also give you the discipline to guard and take care of what you get. Things you get too quickly don't get the honor they should because in your mind, if you lost it, you can get it again. But God tonight is teaching them patience. March around the wall. Do it for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets. On the seventh day, you're going to walk around seven times. Then you're going to blow the trumpet. He says, I want to teach you some patience. But then I kept reading this text. And not only did he tell them, I want to teach you some patience so that you can acquire this strange victory, but I also got to teach you perfection. Wait a minute. Why would he not tell them to do it on the sixth day? Why, why, why would he not tell them to six day walk around six times then the priest blow the trumpet and give a shout why, why would he not tell them on the sixth day um, um, I, I, I want to just put here while I'm pressing through to tell somebody you can't stop on six <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know I don't know what your six is but I want to tell you tonight you can't stop on six he says I didn't want them to do it on the sixth day because according to biblical numerology, six speaks to the number of man. And here's the truth tonight. Man can try as hard as he pleases, but he'll never obtain victory. But I had to teach them how to wait till the seventh day because seven speaks of completion. It's, it's God's perfect number. And anything God tells you to do you ought to see it till it's done. I got to keep pressing, but I just want to talk to somebody in this room tonight that you've given up on God's plan for your life because what you thought you should have had by now doesn't line up with what God intends for the journey to be in your life. But I want to tell you tonight, you can't stop on six because God got some stuff that he wants to give to you as a result or a reward to your obedience. I got to quit this. Um, seventh day, walk around seven times and then give a great shout. God says, I wanted them to walk around on the seventh day seven times because I wanted to make sure they did something that depleted their energy. So that when the victory took place, there would be no doubt that it was my power. Aren't you glad tonight that God has a way of stripping you of your own self-dependency so that when he brings you through, you made it over? You don't have to wonder how you made it, but you can testify it was nobody but the power of God. But here's the other thing. He's teaching patience. He's teaching perfection. But he does all of this while he's present. Don't miss the text. He says, I'm teaching you patience, I'm teaching you perfection, but I'm doing all of this because you can do this with my presence. Don't miss the text. The Bible says that he put himself in the middle of the battle because the priest had to carry the Ark of the Covenant. 
you do know that the Ark of the Covenant is a representation of the very presence of God with his people. So God says, go on out there, walk around, do it with some patience, but don't trip because you got me right there with you. Jericho is shut in. They're watching them march around the city once a day and they're doing it in total silence except for the sound of them blaring ram's horns. As the days passed by, they jeered at the Israelites' behavior. I'm certain it was unsettling as the suspense was increasing their terror. They didn't know they were already defeated because God was involved. <laughs> They're looking out of the window and it's rather strange. Who comes to battle walking around in silence? On the first day, it's a little strange because you don't know what they're thinking. Second day, they're walking around, and this is rather strange. Who, what, what are they planning to do? Later on, they probably start jeering, laughing, mocking at their tactic, not knowing that the Lord was already in the middle of it. <laughs> but he says to them, while you're walking around, don't say anything. Don't say anything. He said, I want to teach you, I want to teach you some patience. I want to teach you how to do it to perfection. I want to teach you how to, to do this with my presence. But I don't want you to say anything because I want to teach you self-control. When you walk around, don't say nothing. I would surmise that the lesson learned for the fact that he tells them don't say anything, I would surmise that the lesson learned is you got to be okay with trusting silence when you're pursuing the promise. <laughs> Can I tell you tonight, words are influential. And you have to be careful protecting them at the right time. I ran across a Instagram post one day that says more moves, less announcements. I want to tell you tonight that making unnecessary announcements about your revelation gives the enemy ammunition to find a way to stop the very thing you're trying to go after. Can I tell you tonight while you're going around it you got to be quiet because sometimes you say the wrong stuff to the wrong people. If you don't think your neighbor going to respond in an, in an irate way, just look at them and tell them, stop talking so much. <laughs> but, but, but can I, I'm almost done with this, but can I pose an, a striking interrogative tonight and I'm done. How many times have you hindered progress because you underestimated silence ability to speak for itself? Come on, talk to me. I, I, Think about that. How, how, how many times have you hindered progress, stagnated your movement because you underestimated silence ability to speak for itself? Can I tell you tonight, not only can silence speak for itself, but silence can never be misquoted. God doesn't always call us to a walk that is loud. Sometimes victory comes after periods of quiet obedience. That's where we are in this season known as the Lenten season. It's a, it's a time for intentional sacred silence. Moments of meditation. Because when you learn how to sit somewhere and be quiet, I'm not at home. <laughs> it, give, it give way to hearing clearly the commands of God. He says they need to march in silence. I'm wrapping it up. Thank you, Mo, for letting me share tonight. They, they, they needed to do it in silence. And the reason they needed to do it in silence 
is so that they wouldn't be distracted when the time came for them to get the signal to blow the trumpet. You, 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 gotta, you gotta be attentive long enough so that you can know when it's time to blow the right trumpet. In American history, soldiers would tell you that when they did not hear the commander's instructions, it usually meant disaster and chaos and defeat for them. But he says to them, when you walk around seven times on the seventh day, then the priest will tell you to blow the trumpet. But here's what's interesting. In the life of Israel, they had two horns to blow. They had a silver horn and a ram's horn. The silver horn made a trumpet sound. Ram's horn was a smaller version, but they both were significant. They blew the silver horn when it was time for war. But they blew the ram's horn when it was time for worship. You got to be quiet long enough so that you can know which horn to blow. But you also got to have an attentive ear. Because you don't want to blow a worship horn when it's time for war. Neither tonight do you want to blow the war horn when it's time for worship. But he tells them tonight that uh, when you get the signal to blow the horn, he said, then you have to give a great shout. Now, I don't know tonight, yes, Lord, what kind of shout is a great shout. But uh, I believe tonight that uh, a great shout is one when you don't care how you look when you're done. Have I got a witness tonight? And I'm done with y'all tonight, but uh, would you please look at somebody tonight and tell them, neighbor, I came tonight to give God a great shout. Have I got a witness tonight? And you know the Bible said when they gave a great shout, the wall fell down flat. Have I got a witness tonight? And since we don't know what they said when they shouted, I believe tonight we ought to practice and give him a great shout. Have I got a witness here? I don't know. I said I don't know. I don't know tonight what you need to fall in your life. But I want to challenge you to give him a great shout. Have I got a witness here? Would you lean, lean on my neighbor and tell him, neighbor, excuse me, excuse me for a moment, but I got some things I need to fall in my life. And if you don't mind, tonight just lift your hands and give God give him a great shout have I got a witness here is there anybody in this room tonight who can lift your hands tonight and say win oh win I look around and I I think things over all of my good days. They outweigh my bad. And it all, it all I made up. I 
I made up in my mind I won't complain I'm through with y'all tonight But is there anybody here Yes, Lord Who can slip your arms Around some I'm done now Around somebody's shoulder And tell them, baby Whatever you need It's in your shout Whatever you need Is coming down in your shout If it's depression it can happen in your shout if it's low self-esteem it can happen it can happen I'm done. Ah, ah, it's in my show. My children are blessed because it's in my shoulder. My family is blessed because it's in my shoulder. Ah, Anybody got a shout in your spirit tonight? Anybody got a shout in your soul? Touch your name and tell them, excuse me for a minute. Touch them out and tell them I got some stuff I need from God. And I'm not going to wait till he gives it to me. But oh, I lift up my hand. Throw my head back and shall do it for me. Anybody want him to do it for you? Anybody want him to do it for you? Anybody need God to do anything? Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will. God will. Touch him out and tell him God will. God will. Touch him out and tell him God will. God will. Won't he take care? My soul getting heavy. Won't he take care? Won't he take care? Can I ask you a question tonight? Have you tried him? Do you know my God? Has he ever made a way for you? Has he ever healed your body? Has he ever kept your mind? Yeah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus said I wasn't. Don't tell nobody. When I look back down that road behind me, when I look down that road behind me, touch a night and tell him when I look down that road behind me, didn't nobody do it but him. If you believe, I'm done tonight, but if you believe it, just tell him thank you, sir. I'm done. If your next victory depended upon your shout, what kind of shout would you give him? Yeah. 
I'm done, but just forget all about your neighbor. This is a you and God moment. That your neighbor don't have to know what you need. But I know somebody who will rock you to sleep tonight. I know somebody. Somebody give him a shout. Somebody give him a shout. This is about your victory. This is about your victory. We getting ready to move, but I touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, excuse me. While I grab this last praise from the bottom of my belly. And give God a big praise, everybody. Come on. his name bless his name hallelujah yeah. oh lord hallelujah bless the name of the lord i, I need y'all to do me a favor just go find three people that's next to you and tell them, neighbor, I got victory and so do you. Tell them, I got victory. I got victory and so do you. So if you got victory and I got victory, why don't we praise him together? Because we got victory. Yeah! the victory people to give him a praise you got your victory on the first night now let everything I said let everything yeah I said let everything
Come on, clap your hands and give him glory, everybody. Clap your hands like you got victory. Come on. Come on, clap your hands like you got victory. It's just the first night. Tell somebody revival is broken out in this house. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Everyone standing. Somebody thank God for the word and thank God for the voice that God has used and sent in this house. Come on, celebrate Jesus for Pastor Frank Harris. Come on, celebrate Jesus for my brother. Fellowship, can I ask y'all to do me a favor? Um, Pastor Harris is on his way to New Jersey uh, tomorrow to preach the gospel. And the Lord sent him here tonight to preach the gospel to us. Can we just ask the Lord to strengthen him? Can we just ask the Lord to strengthen him? Come on, just pray for him right now. If he's poured into you, come on, pray for him. Come on, pray for him that God will strengthen him again for the assignment that's on his life. Give him sweet rest. Give him strength. Refresh his spirit. Refresh his mind. In Jesus' name. Now come on, celebrate this man of God with the word of God. No, let's celebrate the man of God with the word of God. Thank you for coming, man. Y'all don't mind if he come back, do you? He can come back? Yeah. I was just checking, you know, I was just checking. You all are the best, and I think you deserve the best that preaching has to offer, and one of the best voices in America stood here tonight. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, while you're standing, while you're standing, I want to thank God, church, as many people are in here tonight. We've got a great, great first night crowd here tonight. We have almost 500 people on YouTube. Amen. and just under 300 on Facebook. Come on, let's give God praise for that. I want to thank all of you who are in the virtual sanctuary tonight. I pray that the Holy Ghost and the Word of God has blessed you as he has blessed us here in the sanctuary. But I don't want to take for granted that just because you're in church, you're saved, it's possible and probable that somebody may be here tonight that has not confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you're looking to make Jesus your Lord and your choice. And I, won't, I don't want you to wait until Sunday to make that decision because Sunday is not promised to you. Anything can happen to you between now and then. So the good news is Jesus Christ is available 24 hours, seven days a week. He's available right here, right now. Whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're online, if you want to make Christ your decision and your desire, the process is simple. You've heard the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ tonight. 
And after hearing the word of God, you've got to be willing to believe three things in your heart. Number one, you've got to be willing to accept the lordship of Jesus Christ. To be willing to submit to his way, his rule, his way of living. Make him lord over your life. Number two, you've got to be willing to accept by faith that Jesus Christ died for you and died as you. That he who knew no sin became sin. And you may become the righteousness of God. Number three, you've got to be willing to believe in your heart that after being dead for three days, God raised him from the dead to grant us victory over sin and death that we may have eternal life with the Lord. If you're willing to believe those three things in your heart, and you're willing to confess that out of your mouth, tonight is your night to give your life to Jesus Christ. Or I'm talking to somebody who is saved but don't have a church home, a place to call home, a place where you and your family can go and grow in God. If you fit either one of those two categories, I want to offer Jesus Christ to you and I want to offer the Fellowship Bible Church to you as a place for your growth in the Lord. If anyone is here tonight in this sanctuary or online, if you're in the sanctuary and you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ, I want to do it tonight. All I'm asking you to do is just step out of your seat and just meet me here at the front. The clergy are here awaiting to greet you and waiting to greet your arrival. All we want to do is ask you to make a, a step of faith. All believers have made this same step of faith. And I want this to be your night. That revival hit your life. That you gave your life to Jesus Christ. On a Tuesday night. If there's one here, come on. Come on. It's your time and turn. God sent you in this church. In the balcony, I'm talking to you as well. God sent you in this church to hear this word from this preacher in this season of your life. That the word of God may become flesh in your life. Will there be one that will come and say, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. If you're online and you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to the Lord. What must I do to be saved? I've given you the plan of God, but if you respond affirmatively to the directions that are on screen, scan the QR code or text the keyword join. 478-249-5426. We've got staff standing by waiting to greet you in the love of Jesus Christ. Come on, it's your time and your turn. To worship him. Been through too much. Been through too much. Who else is it? It says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life and my heart to Jesus Christ. I've got some people coming, church. Come on, church, give God praise. fellowship would you ask everybody around you are they saved and do they have a church home 
If they say no to any one of those questions, tell them you'll walk with them. You don't have to stand by themselves. I don't want you to miss this time, this opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If there's another one that will come, come on, it's your day and time. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is about the security of your soul and being reconciled to God. At the end of the day, church is still about souls being saved. And they still coming. Fellowship, how y'all feel about these souls? Bless his name. My worship. My worship is for you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, celebrate them, church. Now this is, these are your, your children? Wait a minute, so the children brought the mama? <laughs> and a child shall leave thee. <laughs> I love Jesus, I swear I do. Will there be another one that will come? This year, you might have been waiting on the first person to move. They've already made their move. Now it's your time and turn to give your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. On behalf of Jesus Christ, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. And it so happened you just now the latest members of the baddest church in Middle Georgia. God bless you. We, all of these people behind you are your new family. We're your new family. Amen. Behind you is Minister Hall, Minister Quincy Hall. If you'll go with him, we'll take you in the back and bring you back in in about five minutes. Come on, church, let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, church, give God praise for him. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. Would you be seated if you can? What an awesome, awesome night this has been to kick off our Let's Go Revival. My God, today. Church, it's giving time. It's giving time. I want to ask, let me ask everybody, um, if you would like to use an envelope, raise your hand, raise your hand. Ushers, if you'll pay attention also to the choir stand, if anyone wants to use an envelope behind me. If you want to use an envelope, raise your hand. We've got ushers everywhere to bring you an envelope. Uh, those of you that are online, if you'll follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, I want to ask everybody, I want to ask everybody, Choose one of these options. If you will sacrifice a gift of $30 tonight, let me ask you humbly, if you'll sacrifice a gift of $30 tonight. Now, some of you may have planned to give more. Of course, you do more. You do what the Spirit of God has led you to do. Uh, some of you may say, Pastor, I don't have that. I got $29.99. Uh, you, you do that. <laughs> You, you do that. Amen. Amen. I want you to give liberally and joyfully tonight. I want you to give liberally and joyfully tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's ask the Lord's blessings over our gifts. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, would you bless us now as we give liberally and cheerfully? Thank you that we have something to give and we give you all the glory and all the honor for every good and perfect gift comes from you. All we're doing is taking what you've given us and we give it back to you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Again, those of you that are even in the virtual space, if you will choose one of these options on screen, if you're giving tonight um, by way of the Shelby Next app, please be reminded when you go in, you want to manually put it on one-time gift. If you're giving tonight uh, with regard to uh, our goal zero, you can do that also through Shelby tonight. And let's do it for the glory of God. How many of you are grateful you got something to give? Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that I got something to give. And I want to give it to the Lord cheerfully. And listen, after hearing a word like that, your spirit just ready to give. Amen. Amen. What a profound, anointed word we've heard tonight from this great man of God. I'm glad he's my friend. Amen. Amen. I thank God for him. Uh, if anyone is watching tonight from the Second Canaan Church back home in Detroit, we bless the Lord for you. Thank you for tuning in uh, tonight to hear your pastor do what your pastor does. Amen. We celebrate him uh, and the Second Canaan Church. Amen. Amen. Come on, church, let's thank God for our gifts now. Let's thank him for our gifts. Let's thank him for our gifts. Those of you with envelopes, if you have your envelopes prepared, would you lift your hand? Lift your hand. Deacons, come. Deacons, come. Deacons, come. Okay. Deacons, come. The deacons are coming to retrieve the gifts of those of you that have envelopes. While they're doing that, we are always humble and thankful uh, when we have guests with us and uh, particularly uh, pastors uh, worshiping with us. We respect uh, their very busy and cumbersome schedules. And so we always are grateful when we have uh, pastors to worship with us. And tonight, again, uh, two of our sons pastoral sons are here tonight pastor Jonathan Louder is here tonight come on show some love to the home team amen amen pastor. and again our sons from Detroit pastor Ennis Monroe is here and his wonderful wife Jasmine is in the house come on y'all show some love to them God bless you bless you and you know, a great pastor of the New Hope Church of Macon, Pastor Chris Cabanis. Pastor Cabanis, is he still here? Did he leave? He left. All right. We thank God for him being here with us tonight. We're always thankful when we have pastors to join us uh, in worship. Uh, are there any other pastors present that I may have missed? Uh, any other pastors present? Amen. Amen. God bless you, bless you. That's a new pastor right there. Amen. Come on, church. Thank God for him. Amen. Amen. We bless you on your journey, man, your new assignment. God bless you. Amen. Any other uh, clergy? Any other clergy present? Bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so very much. Any first-time visitors? This is your first time here at Fellowship. Would you stand? This is your first time here. Look at this, church. Look at this. First time being here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, church. Um, Y'all know well, we had great church tonight. And it didn't take all night to do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being on time. And I want to respect your schedules and work schedules and things of that nature. We got two more nights. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, one of the uh, very, very uh, celebrated voices in the kingdom of God, the pastor of the Spirit and Truth Church of Atlanta, Georgia, Pastor Mark Moore will be our guest preaching voice on tomorrow night. Come on, let's thank God for him. 
I would that you would prepare to worship Jesus Christ again with us tomorrow. And I want to thank all the fellowship. Come on, fellowship. Give yourselves a hand. All the fellowship here tonight. Our music ministry, ushers, security, deacons, media, clergy, everybody. First impressions, our staff, everybody. Thank you all. Our deacons, everybody for serving tonight. And we do it in a spirit of excellence. Let's stand. Before y'all leave tonight, uh, I want to remind y'all if anybody's thirsty, y'all see the name on this water? Anybody need some water? You can get it from the core. Y'all know y'all thirsty, don't? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Get it from the core. I don't worry about that, brother minister of music. Don't worry about that. I know you thirsty. You work hard tonight. Get it from the core. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh, I love my group. I love my group. Everybody look this way so I can ask the Lord's blessings on you tonight. The Lord God bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and give you peace. May he bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless you going out and you coming in. May the favor of God grant you what money cannot buy you. And may you walk in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. Good night.